Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to Charleston Antifa, located here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We wanted to welcome you to our glass identification class. Uh, we ask that you turn off all cell phones and walk into your dealer, please. And I'm going to hand it over to David, our dealer, uh, 4429, and he's going to teach you all about glass identification today. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. So who is this David dude? <laughs> Uh, my aunt, when I was 12, 50 years ago, no, more than that, 54 years ago, um, used to take me to auctions in Iowa. And so from then on, she taught me a lot about glass and china and everything, actually, but a lot about glass. I know a little, but it's a very broad topic. You know, we've got everything, I've got everything on the table from Victorian, 1890 up to, I think this one was 1991. And so we'll talk about the different, um, <clears throat> the different eras and some of the manufacturers. And um, we'll talk about pricing and about um, just, just general knowledge about glass. Um, this summer I spent about a month in the Midwest in Iowa and everywhere that I went, the dealers told me glass is on the upswing. That glass is getting more and more hard to find. And good glass is becoming more and more expensive. And so um, those of us that are dealers, I think we need to keep that in mind. Good glass, not the mass produced stuff. Not like this, depression glass made during the depression. Um, Probably a million of those made. And so, but good glass, glass that, that is signed, one of, a pe one of a kind pieces are on the upswing. Yesterday I worked here and we sold a lot of glass, didn't we? I mean, there were, there were, there were customers in that bought five or six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 pieces. There were a couple of pieces of Lalique in this case that went yesterday. I was gonna say, uh, you need to check out the Lalique in that case. They're not there anymore. They sold yesterday. And so um, glass is, is on the upswing. Um, Victorian glass. And everything we know about Victorian is they were, they were over the top. Everything was fancy. These are some examples of the Victorian glass. If you'll notice, it has hand painted. They're hand painted. Um, this is cranberry. Cranberry glass and red glass, when they make the formula, they have to actually pour gold, solid gold, into the vat of glass that they're making. And so anytime, I did stained glass for years, made stained glass windows for churches and things. Anytime that gold went up, the price of red glass went up because you actually, there's actually gold in the glass. Here's another example of Victorian. Again, hand painted over the top. Is that the same like, like satin glass? Um, this would be called satin glass. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah satin glass has been made through, through the years. Um, so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is the difference between cut glass and press glass. Cut glass and press glass. Um, very heavy. This is, this is actually cut. You can see that it has, you can see that the, the light reflects. And this is pressed. You can actually, on this one, you can see, this one has one, two, three mold marks. This was put into, pre the glass was pressed into a mold. The cut glass was actually, there was actually someone who would set at a wheel and they would etch cut into the glass. The, the, the way that I tell the difference is cut glass is sharp. It's so sharp that it can cut you. This is dull. There, there's nothing that's going to cut you there. Um, this is pretty heavy, but I am going to pass it around. The reason is if you look, if you hold, you got to hold it just right. 
But in the middle where I've marked it, this is actually a marked piece. It was made by Libby. Not very uh, seldom, very seldom does the, um, is glass, cut glass marked, but it is sometimes. This one is marked Libby, it's there in the middle. You have to, per, you have to be pretty, um, you have to just hold it just right to see it. It's etched and it's not very, it's, it's pretty faint. The problem with cut, gla with cut glass is it's very fragile. It chips easily. All of these, all of these edges um, chips easily. In fact, this one's chipped right here. I don't care. I use it for cookies. So I don't care that it has a little chip. Well, yeah. See? See, next time we have a class, they want cookies and cake. <laughs> um, the other thing about cut glass is if you're washing it or you're, you're um, doing anything with it, you need to make sure that there's no rapid temperature change. Like put it in hot water, take it out and put it in cold water, the thing will crack. I was at a country auction once and it was sunny and there was a beautiful cut glass bowl on a, on a flatbed. They picked it up and just the coolness in the air, the thing cracked in two pieces. So, um, you need to be if you if you have cut glass, so you need to be careful. Like this reach out for? Um, because it has a chip. Yeah. Mm, probably twenty five dollars, thirty five dollars. If it didn't, I can. If it didn't, that. if it didn't, maybe ninety five. Again, feel it, feel the yeah. back of it, because you can feel that it is. That it's the easiest way for me to remember that it's cut glass is that it's so so sharp that it can cut you. Yeah. It's hard. It's very hard. Um, very seldom. Oh, I'm sorry. She asked if the chips can be buffed out. It's expensive for one thing. Um, another thing is the, um, it, the value does not return. The value does not return on a repair piece. Pardon me? Usually you can, yeah. For, for a trained eye, you could. Especially that's a pretty deep that's a pretty deep chip, and so it's going to have a, a slant on it. All right. So this was all like the late eighteen hundreds, right? Yes. Yeah. Cut glass cut glass is Victorian era. It is Victorian era. So eighteen ninety up until about nineteen ten. But it, w it was time consuming. Can you imagine sitting at a wheel and cutting all those little grooves in there? And so what did we do? <laughs> we went to mass produced, mass produced. <laughs> I'm going to give you a handout later. Number three says car. I'm going to talk to you about car glass. <laughs> I don't know how that where that got in there, but so when you see car, you'll wonder, what in the world was that about? Nothing. Um, <laughs> next thing I wanted to talk to you about is carnival glass. Carnival glass is interesting. Um, some people think that it started with Tiffany. They made all that beautiful glass that looked like carnival. And it was very, very popular. And so all of these companies started to make glass that looked like Tiffany carnival glass but they flooded the market. And so it was actually given away at the carnivals. You would, you would, they would put this bowl in the middle and if your little penny landed in it, you would get the bowl. So that's where the carnival comes in. Um, my grandma had a um, decanter and some wine glasses. And I said, carnival glass. And I said to grandma, they're worth a lot of money. And she said, my dad got them for free because he took cattle and put, took them to the Omaha Cattle Exchange and sold cattle in the 1900s. So he got them for free. So carnival glass. Um, a couple things I want to do. I'm going to send some of these around too. If you look, this is a beautiful color. It's red, it's blue beautiful color, 
But if you look in the inside, this does not have a good finish. The finish on this one is good, not good. It has a straw mark. I'm going to send this one around. The color is not good on this one, but <clears throat> the actual finish on this one is really good. And then, so this one's blue. The, the um, orange yeah. is, not, is not as good. And then this one is actually an amber, which is purple. This is beautiful. So actually, this wouldn't be worth nearly as much. Not near as much. Only if you like, you like this. So this is also pressed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 pressed glass. Okay. And that's like the 20s or the 1910s? Mm hmm Yeah. So what year is Depression glass from? Depression. Uh, carnival. Or Carnival. Yeah, that's Carnival. Carnival and Depression. Depre yeah, different. Okay, next thing is, and I wanted to come up, show you some books here. We're going to talk about identification a little bit, but book, books are so important to me because there's no way that I can look at this, this, and say, what pattern is it? Who made it? I have no idea. But I can go on my books and I've spent hours and hours and hours going through page by page, going, mm. oh, there it is. So um, a lot of people say, oh, I don't use books anymore. I look at everything up on the internet. I can't. I can't. I, personally, I can't do it. So, um, yeah, it doesn't look the same. So um, the next thing is these elegant glass of the Depression era. And elegant glass is was used they made whole big sets of it my uh my sister collected um candlewick which is clear glass and it has balls all the way around it i didn't i've, I've got some of my boot but i didn't bring any here um and she had everything from dinner plates and salad plates and all of the serving pieces and so the elegant glassware, all of them, all the, you could set a whole table with one pattern. So these are all, these are all of that era. Um, I'm, the plate I want you to, when you see it, it has a nice, that look at the bottom rim. The very bottom rim is very flat. It's been ground. Even though they have, um, they were mass produced. They, they, they did a very good job with these. Most, most of the uh, de elegant glass has the etched. They're all etched. They're all etched. And that was during when? This was Depression era, end of Depression. 20s? 20s? No, 40s. Oh, 40s. 20s. 29, yes. 30. I'll get my history. I'll get my history right here in a minute. Wait a minute. Late 30s. Yeah. Wow. What year was the carnival glass? Carnival glass was um, 1900, 1900, all up through the Depression. Boy, also depression. Didn't they also have stores and stuff, give some of that stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Some, sometimes it came in old mail. Sometimes it came, it came in old mail. Yeah. Here's a little cordial, too. You can send that one around, too. Okay, depression glass comes in all kind, several colors. Pink is the most pink, green, um, and amber are the they're the main colors. Um, made during the depression, made cheaply. Tons of it were made. They they um, there is a thing that I read that said that the longer the depression went on the thinner the glass got because it was cheaper and cheaper to make. So um, some of it can be very plain. This one has no pattern at all. 
And this one has, that's the cherry blossom, I believe. Yeah, that's cherry blossom. And they made most, mo most of the depression glass was made for um, everyday use. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't something that fancy. They didn't need fancy. They needed something that they could use every day. early <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's heavy it's heavy yeah, the yeah. i think that the other one there might be later <laughs> yeah there are there are some oh, she's asking if they're making anything that looks like depression glass they are for a long time, not a particular time, for a long time, depression was so hot that they were reproducing it. The yellow? Yeah, that's bright yellow. Um, the yellow, bright yellow? Or more, more amber like this? Was there some purple also? They did. They did make. They did make an amber that that was the. Excuse me. That was depression glass. Uh -huh. it, it is collectible. Any anything's collectible. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm ready to go home with anybody here. So I, I'm I'm collectible, right? You can you can collect me anytime you want. Okay, any other questions? You okay back there, Linda? You okay back there? Any questions? No, I'm enjoying She's a good liar. Um, so another, another one that I wanted to talk to you about was Mary Gregory. Mary Gregory developed a, a, a style of putting a, a painting people on glass um, this is a more modern piece but still very nice this is an older piece this is actually out of my personal collection um, 1910 yeah the, these are about 1910 I don't know if I want to touch it Actually, yeah, it's applied. It, it is the Mary Gregory uh, painting applied? It's actually hand painted. It's actually hand painted. And this is when you say more recent, like how is it? Um, I would say that's probably from the forties. This one would be from the teens. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm going to leave this one up here. You can see it at the, yeah. at the end of class. I'll leave this one up here. Um, another, another thing is cut to clear. Cut to clear. This is beautiful, a beautiful piece of cut to clear. So what they've done is they've taken a, a piece of glass that was red that had um, clear underneath. And somebody has taken the time and they have cut into the red to make it so that it would be, have that design. Is that um, for vinegar or salad dressing or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be for salad dressing. This is another one. I'll just send this one around. Another cut to clear. So the clear and then the, then the green glass is on top. And then they cut through the green to, um, to make the pattern. Know the old from the new that you get from Europe nowadays. This, this is this is actually fairly new. It is fairly new. But it's still desirable. It's still I'm collectible, honey. <laughs> I just, be careful. I, I have a whole house full of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's gorgeous. Yeah. 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 Anything's collectible. What year was it? Which one? Um, 
Both of these are probably from the 50s. Mm -hmm. It's gorgeous. How long would it take an artisan to do this? I mean, this even has lacing on the bottom. I mean, that is like phenomenal. How long would it take an artisan to do the cut to clear? Depends on how good they are, probably. You know, if they, you know, if they're good at it, you know, if you do it for eight hours a day, five days a week, you might be be able to do it fast. Like a day, two days. I don't think so. Um, she's asking if the Mary Gregory has a finish on it. I don't believe so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's that's basically what we're, we're going to talk about some other things later, but that's basically just through the years, the older stuff. Now I'm, I'm going to switch gears and I'm going to talk to you about some modern art glass, some modern art glass. Um, if who should I pick on? I like I like sunglasses. I like the sunglasses on top of the head. Yeah, you. So if, if I'm buying a piece of art, like a painting, how do I know that it's any good? If you like it. If you like it? Then worth something to you. Worth something to me? Huh? What did she say? If it has a signature. If it has a signature. So... Uh, all of these, any, anything that I've sold, sold you, showed you so far, no signature. Except that one piece. The Libby. The Libby. Except that one piece of Libby. So, um, modern. This, this was made in Sweden. I'm not going to pass it around. It's heavy as lead. It is, the artist has signed it. Her personal signature. And then it has it has um, her the, a signature. No, who made it? And a bunch of date marks and things. Expensive piece, one of a kind. One of a kind. Is that a vase? It's a vase. Again, signed, signed piece. This was made by Abram. This was Helen Krantz, by the way, K-R-K-R-A-N-T-Z. This was made by Abram in 1993. Again, signed, signed. So um, if, you're, if you're buying modern and you want good quality, something that's going to increase in value, look for that signature. Most of the time it's going to be etched in. Most of the time, it's going to be etched in. It's all right. It's all right. The good stuff's right here. So, um, how am I going to how am I going to find this piece? These pieces. We've talked about it. Books, books. Another way is Google Lens. Doesn't always work for me. Doesn't always work for me, but sometimes it does. My friend Alan brought in a vase, and he's not, his significant other's back here. Brought in a vase. I was sitting there. I looked at it. We looked at it, and I'm like, nah, I think it might be good, Alan. We took a picture. It was Russian and worth a little bit of money. Okay? So you can find them on, on Google Lens. Um, Another way that I, use, I do a lot of, if I'm hunting something in particular, if I'm hunting this, this glass, I'll go on Replacements Limited. And Replacements Limited is, I would just put in, I know that this is Waterford, smart. It has the signature there, it has a signature here, and it has the tag. I know that, um, I know that it is Waterford, so I can look and put in Waterford in my search engine and try to, and I can find the pattern that way. 
the problem that I don't go for the, with their prices though, because their prices are nuts. It's it's um, my opinion. I hope you don't work for them. No, I don't, <laughs> I don't know anything about glasses. Yeah. Um, they they. Uh, um, what happens is if I if I had six of these that were my grandmother's and I broke one, they're counting on me that I need one badly, and they will um, and they'll their their prices are high. But if you have three left and you want to sell them, <laughs> call me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so that replacement limit is is another way, but my, I I'm going back to these. I'm going back to these. If I if I want to find something, I go back to I go back to books. Okay, let's talk just a few minutes or a while. What time is it? Steve told me I had 26 minutes, so I have one more minute. I'm kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, let's talk just about some manufacturers. Fenton is one of my favorite. There's a lot of Fenton around. Um, this one for, is from 1907 to 2007. Here's another one, 1940 to 1970. It's a lot of Fenton. Um, one of one of my favorites, and it's easy to see, or easy to find, and easy to identify, is Spenton around the top. This one is silver crest because it looks like silver. Um, they made pink, they made blue, they made green. Okay. Old Fenton is not marked. It's not marked. Old Fenton is not marked. That's an older piece of Fenton. You'll find it in the books, but it is not marked. This is a newer piece of Fenton. If you'll notice, right in the middle in the back has an oval that says Fenton. Oh my goodness, somebody needed to wipe that one out. That's dirty. <laughs> That would, that would be classified as satin, wouldn't it? Satin glass? I don't know. Satin glass yeah. I have is um, color, two colors. Like um, another another um, manufacturer is Duncan Miller. And this, for me, the Duncan Miller, I always look for the daisy in the bottom. They made other things. But this is a pattern that, um, that's very easy to recognize with the daisy in the bottom. It's heavy. And this one looks like it has a little chip. Duncan Miller. Heise was a company that um, made a lot of glassware. I love Heise because 99% of the time it is marked. It is marked. It is a diamond with an H in it. Yeah. Always, usually in the middle. Really? Huh. And if you, if you, um, the other thing is, it's kind of fun is that one you can see it's very, that diamond in the H is very, very pronounced. Yeah. This one is getting a little bit faded. This is later in the production. As as the mold as the mold started to wear out, the um, the diamond in the middle would yeah. would wear out too. Also, notice on the bottom of the heisey how ground that ground how how um, flat the bottom is. I'm giving you a lot of information. Are you learning anything? Yes. Okay. I was a teacher for 35 years. I have to ask for every so often. 
Mommy, don't give us a test. <laughs> oh, that's a, te a test, a test in cake. Okay, so um, we're gonna. I'm gonna talk to you for a few here about some um, foreign stuff. Waterford has been around for a long time. Always marked. Always marked. This is, a, this is a piece that still has the paper label, but it's marked Waterford here. Um, was made in Ireland, but they've closed their factory. Really? And so now Waterford is made in Germany. This is a Waterford made in Germany. And I'm going to send them around because there's a difference in the signatures. If you, um, this one, this one has kind of a, in the middle where the ER is, there's a, there's a seahorse. This one, very plain. Okay, so... Um, so you know the seahorse was made in Ireland. If you have in Waterford that doesn't have the seahorse. It's newer. It's newer. And I love paper labels <laughs> because uh, it tells us this one's made in Germany. Oh, I didn't uh, see the. It looks different too. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't have the. I wouldn't even know if that didn't have the label. I wouldn't even know it was water. But, you know, it's just. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting for that. Yeah, I can. So the French, the French made a um, a glassware called baccarat. Yeah. Baccarat. This is actually a piece of baccarat, and I circled it, but it wore off already. The signature, again, always marked. The signature is here at the end by the tail. You have to hold it just right in the light. I love Baccarat because it's so clear. There's no bubble. There's no, there's no marks of any kind. It's just clear. So, um, there was a company called Steuben that was, that was from East Coast. I can't remember. Is it from New Jersey, Luna? Oh, come on, Luna. You know, you're just, you're just trying to be, you're trying to be, yeah. Um, usually always marked with a, with, almost looks like a, like a pen, like a, um, just etched in. That's in. It's not a mark that they that that they um, burned in. It's always in script. These are two little ashtrays, and the, um, I'm going to send them both around. The bigger one. I want you to notice on the bottom how much how much it's marked up. This one has been used. It's been slid around back and forth across the table or something. It's it's very um, it's used. So that tells us, if you, if you see those kind of marks on the bottom, tells us that it has some age. Wasn't, it wasn't brand new. And I, I've taken a, a, a marker and marked the signature because they are very hard to see. Now they still make this? Mm -hmm. they're, still in, they're still in existence. Yeah, these are ashtrays. <laughs> what people do with them. Yeah, they are ashtrays. They're dental floss. Um, Oh yeah, I can see. Um, I have to tell you, I have to tell you a quick Steuben story. I was at an auction, Michelle. I was at an auction. You're probably there too. And um, they had Steuben. In, there were a set of twelve in boxes, Steuben boxes, and every piece was in a cloth bag. 
Uh, so I bought water goblets, 12 water goblets and 12 wine goblets. Cloth bags, Steuben put them in cloth bags. That's how high end they were. That's how high end they were. Um, Tiffany did not make modern glassware, but they retailed it. This is actually a piece of Tiffany. It says it here on the, back, or on the bottom. I'm not gonna send it around. The table back there is getting full. Um, milk glass. Easy, right? This is an old piece of milk glass. The way you can tell, if you hold this up to the light, it looks, it, look, it has fire, what we call fire around the edges. The, um, it's like an orange, like orange. Um, this one I'm going to send, it is actually a piece of Westmoreland. Westmoreland. It, Westmoreland was marked. It looks like it's a W with a C. And you can, you can see it on the bottom of this one. I'm going to send this one. This one you can come up and see later. I'll leave it up here. But that's an old piece. This is new. Yeah, newer. Um, I would say from the 40s, 50s. 60s maybe? Yeah. That's called panel grape. Okay, so I was going to quit there, but I found a wonderful paperweight this week. <laughs> and so I decided that I had to do just, just basic knowledge, basic knowledge about, some, about paperweights. Again, what are we going to look for if we want value? Signature. A signature. A signature. This is the one I found this week. Um, it is made by GES, and that's all that's in the bottom, it just says GES, and 98. The GES stands for Glass Eye Studios, okay? And they made a series that um, were the different planets. And so this one is called Neptune. So it's all etched in the bottom, Neptune. Um, this one is one of my favorites. Any, anything, signature, if, if, if you have a painting and it has a signature and then the artist paints another one, are they going to be exactly alike? No. no, no. This one, you'll never find another one. Orient and Flume, it was made in 1976, a year after I graduated from high school. Um, never see, never, you'll, you'll see, you'll see the form that is almost the same, but you'll never see one exactly alike. Okay. I'm going to leave it up here. You can, you can, um, you can touch it when you come. Um, this one is actually, uh, Swedish, I believe. Again, signature here on the bottom, etched in, etched in. So, um, this one, oh, the other thing, the, this bottom is flat, is, is, it has been ground. So it was, it was made, and so they ground it so that it is, it is very smooth and flat. It almost looks like a geode. Yeah. <laughs> they, they've done very, lots of, lots of um, layers of glass on that one. The... The ones that were mass produced, they're not signed. It's a beautiful paperweight. I mean, that, that would look great in a window, but it's not signed. And the bottom is not smooth, it's rough. The bottom's not smooth, it's rough. Again, this one, it's, it's great. I mean, it's a peacock, I believe. Sets like that. It's a nice paperweight, but it's not smooth not signed so not worth near as much so um so did you save the best for last the purple thing no 
<laughs> oh, I did. I did. I didn't know if I was going to talk to you about it. Oh. It's an eggplant. Yeah, I can see that now. Yeah, it was made by Coast Sabota, and to tell you the truth, I think it's Swedish. Is it Swedish? Mm -hmm. Okay, Coast Sabota. There's some beautiful pieces. Um, what's your name, little girl? Susan. Susan has a has a couple couple little pieces of Costa Boda in a case in the front. Beautiful little little pieces. There's uh, just in a case that's right here. There's a Costa Boda bowl. Beautiful. Are they signed? Yes. 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 Is it more valuable if it's signed and numbered? Yes. It more valuable if it's signed and numbered? Yes. And dated. They like them if they're dated, because then you can tell, you know, exactly when they were made. Isn't that pretty much with anything that you collect? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so, value, signed, condition. It's got to be in good condition. No chips, no cracks. No, um, no scratches, no scratches. Um, something that a lot of people do not know is I do it a lot with um, baskets. Plink it. If it sounds dull, there's probably a crack in the handle. I, I, I do, if I buy a basket, if I buy a glass basket, nine times out of ten, you're going to hear me go to check and see that if the handle's cracked. Because where the handle, where the handle connects to the bowl, cracks easily. So, plink it. If it's dull, something, something's not right. Something's not right. Um, scarcity. And if it's something you like. And if it's something you like, it's valuable. It's valuable. So, um, any questions? Can you tell us anything about the uranium glass? Uranium glass. I, we had a whole class on uranium glass. What is uranium glass? Uh, where was I? It was here, <laughs> and I believe it's online, isn't it? You know oh, that. I'm sorry. She's asking me a asking about a, a, cla a uranium class. They had a whole... Um, yeah, I think I think it went longer than forty-five minutes, didn't it? It was a long class. It's on it's on our it's on the YouTube channel. So if you stop it in front, I believe that there's a, there's cards, and it has a um, a thing that you can scan, and then um, you you'll be able to watch that class because this this class will be there on there too. I didn't bring any be, for that reason. Yeah, uranium class is is most of the time green and if you put a black light on it it glows it has uranium in it Whoa. it has uranium in it this is actually a piece of uranium glass it looks like the green it yeah looks like the depression it is but if you but if you if you actually put a black light to it it is going to glow Ooh. it isn't doesn't hurt you <laughs> Don't, won't hurt you won't make you sick, <laughs> but um, but it does glow. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, Linda. I was just going to ask you about the glass. How it goes? He was just going to pull this. Okay. So she would like to know um, how glass becomes purple. It has there's there's an element in in the glass making process that attracts the sun the the rays from the sun and will actually turn that glass purple. Um, the, old, the old stuff, the old that turned purple, actually would have streaks of, of um, purple in them. Ah! Would have streaks of purple in them because the sun, thank you, the sun would not, the sun would not hit the same on every piece. The new, the stuff that is, that has been done by artificial means, like they put, they, I, I, I was someplace and they had a box that had a light in it 
And I said, what is that? And they said, we're turning this class purple. So that is, it, that is not done by that natural means. And it is, it's usually a little bit darker purple. And it is usually all uniform. There's no light streaks in it. If I can figure out how to turn this on. Can you see the... That's uranium glass. Can you? Yeah. I'll leave it. I'll leave it up here. I'll leave it up here. You can you can do it when we come. This plate is also uranium glass. Is that more more valuable than the regular plate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot a lot of people collect uranium glass. Yes. Um, she's asking about black glass, that when you hold it up to the light, it's a different color. I'm not familiar with the red. I'm familiar with purple. We, it, we called it, we hold it up to the glass, or to the light, it would, it would be purple. We called it, we call it black amethyst. Black amethyst. Um, I thought of a plate, it's black. Hold it up, it's ruby red. Hmm. Just, just the way that the light goes through it makes turns it into a different color. Yeah, cool though. Why does the gold turn to black red? And does it matter if there is gold that's poured into the glass? Um, it's just part of the formula. It's just part of the formula formula that they use to make like this has uranium in it. It's just it's just part of the formula that they use to make the glass turn turns it uh, turns it red. Depression, depression era again. Well, yeah, but all that was depression. Depression. Yeah. Yeah. So depression. They did it the whole 20 years? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Actually, they're still making some, some uranium. Fenton has, in fact, I have a, um, in my booth, I have a, what do you, tea light. Fenton tea, fairy lamp. Fairy lamp that is, that is uranium glass. That will glow. Do I have a booth here? Yeah, it's 4429. I'm over pretty close to the corner. Pretty close to the corner. Take a note. <laughs> okay. okay, any other questions? Questions? Um, yeah, I need to wrap this up. Uh, I'm going to ask a couple of you to tell me something that you learned. Green, green flowers. What did, something that you learned? You know, some of the new um, the marks and different glasses that I did not know what Craig Benton and Viking are all those that are, you know, with Moreland, they're kind of knowledgeable about that, but the one that you showed with the diamond that had the H, that was new to me. So yeah, that's high Z. Never knew one to go look for. <laughs> yeah. Um, Cambridge. Cambridge is another is another um, glass company that the, the the elegant glassware. They did not mark a lot, but there would they have a C that's in a triangle. And if you see some of that, it's rare. It's rare. Okay, uh, one more person. Mm -hmm. One more person. Everybody's looking at the ceiling. <laughs> they don't want to be called on. Yeah. It's very hard. A lot of times, she wanted to know um, if you can t how you can tell if the repro if depression glass is a reproduction. Wait, wait. You know, because remember what I told you: the longer the longer the depression went on, the the thinner the glass got, and and so a lot of a lot of times the wait. So would a reproduction be lighter or heavier? Though, no, yeah, the reproduction is a good, reproduction is going to be heavier. Reproduction is going to be heavier. 
I don't. I, she's wondering if, there, um, if there's reproduction carnival glass. I do not know of any carnival glass that's being reproduced. I do not know of any that's being reproduced. What about um, like a water glasses or whatever, but they're iridescent. They have different colors. That's you mean like, like carnival glass? No, not, not anywhere near that dark. Very light. It's oh. just, just very, very, you know, you can see they kind of glow like um, iridescent. What is that? What is it? What is that? I'd have to see it. I'd have to see that. Here's what I'm going to do because we need to wrap it up. I'm, I'm very sorry. Um, I am here until the cows come home. Well, six o'clock because that's when the cows come home. So if you have any questions or anything you want to talk to me about, I'm right here. And please, before you leave shop, there's beautiful glassware in this mall. Gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Um, if you want to, if you want to see some beautiful pieces of Costa Boda, follow the lady in white. She has two pieces that are gorgeous. Okay, thank you so much. This has been fun. <laughs>